Morning, everybody. Um, we've kept the microphones muted, so uh, if there are any questions, uh, just drop them into the chat. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a brief introduction. Uh, what is Redshift? Uh, Redshift is basically a site builder. Uh, we saw the need to um, develop something that lowered the barriers to entry in creating good quality or high quality WordPress websites. Something that's got an intuitive drag and drop builder um, that that um, allows for easy creation of, of WordPress websites. So I'm just going to share my share my screen with you and give you an overview. Okay, okay great. Everybody can have a, uh, have a look at the screen. The the URL that you're going to use is www.redshift.site, and basically this is the automated site builder. Now. Uh, Doug is going to give us basically uh, an, an intro how to use the site, um, but yeah, uh, I, I'm going to step aside and um, over to Doug. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. And uh, as John said, here's the website that we're talking about, which allows us to create new websites, new WordPress websites at the drop of a button. And really what I want to show you today is um, the power of those websites. Um, and I'm just going to right away jump into what it would look like when you create your website. You're going to get a page that looks very similar to this. It doesn't look like much at the moment, obviously. <laughs> and that's where the magic happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly enable the Visual Builder, which will show you how you now start changing your pages and obviously this goes for adding new pages as well so what I just did was click a button at the top there which enabled the visual builder which means that I can now build this website on the front end by well, largely dragging and dropping, et cetera, et cetera. so there's the existing page if I want to edit this content I would click on this little cog icon which would open up this uh, content in an editor like this, and this is where I could edit it. All right, but right now I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is show you how to access our enormous library of um, templates and layouts that we have available, and that's the true power of uh, Redshift and what gives you the ability to build websites in, in just a couple of minutes. All right, so I'm going to click here on the load from library layout, load from library button. Um, that gives me this pop-up. It takes a second to load my layouts, especially when I'm on a webinar. All right, there we go. So 155 layout packs and over 1,147 uh, 1, total layouts. What that means is that each one of these packs is kind of designed as a almost like a mini website, as it were. And if you clicked into any one of these websites, for example, I'm going to click into this photo marketplace, you'll see that there are a number of layouts within this pack. There's an about one. And if you click on each one, you'll see that it opens up in this preview window over here. So there's an about, there's a categories, a contact, a home, a landing page, a pricing page, and a seller page. Um, in this particular layout. If you go through, there's also a search um, facility on the left-hand side here and categories as well, obviously, so to find what you're looking for. So let me just click on fashion and beauty, for example, and you'll see that it just quickly resorts like that. And then, if, for example, I've got a cosmetic shop. There we go. Right, now, if you want to use one of these layouts, so say, for example, I decided, okay, I have a... Uh, I want to use this home page, then you'll notice that there's a use this layout button over here. Um, there's also this important tick box below that says replace existing content. Um, I'm going to do that because that existing content obviously is just the default content that came with the website and I want to get rid of it quickly. So I'm going to click on, I'm going to make sure that that is ticked and I'm going to click on use this layout. And it does take a second or two to import the layout, so let's give it a sec. It does have to import pictures. 
and all sorts of information. But John. Right, there we go. So it's imported my layout, as you can see. And now it's just a case of going through and obviously changing what I would like to change, changing the background images, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you'll you'll be able to access that. So, for example, this text and this button are inside this particular module here. And when I click on the cog over here to access the module settings, there I can see the Vino. I can change this for my title. And this is the button, Conte, the button uh, down the bottom. I can say, um, see, pricing. And it is instantly changed like that. Well, it is changed. It's not actually changed until you click the Save button here on the bottom right, of course. So you can, you can see it, and you can see what it will really look like. Uh, this background image is obviously on the section, so if you wanted to change that, you would come into the section settings and to the background. And here you would find that image, and you can upload a new image over here. Um, so yeah, that's in brief. That's the that's how the, the drag and drop builder works. Um, right, and um, why do I say drag and drop builder? Well, for example, if you want to change this space, you can see this blue space here. When the when my cursor does that, I can click and drag and change the space without being able to have to code any, anything. And that's what makes this a drag and drop builder, makes it very, very easy for anyone to use. Um, again, these images, this image is a, is a background actually on the column. Um, what you will find in all of your rows and columns uh, and the modules as well, obviously, is that there is countless, countless settings, and that's what really gives them the power. So, for example, in this row, I can go into the design, and you'll see that there is sizing options, spacing options. If you want to add in padding, you don't have to know how to code. You simply come and put a figure in here. I can come and add 10 pixels of padding, and make it happen all the way around. And that'll just put a little bit of space all the way around that image. Uh, if I move this aside, you'll actually see, you'll see it happening. Let me put 100 in and then you'll see it. You'll see how that image moved, created space at the top. All right, let's get rid of it. and on the sides, so borders, box shadows, even animations, there's, um, there's countless animations that you can apply to, uh, to rows, to modules, to, to entire sections. Uh, once you choose an animation, for example, slide, then you'll see that you get a, a whole bunch of um, different settings that, uh, John, just mute yourself. Um, you get a bunch of settings that you can uh, used to control the animation on that particular element. So without you even knowing how to code animations. Right. Um, and as well, under the advanced section, you can see that uh, for those who know how to code, you can add in custom CSS IDs and classes. You can even write in custom CSS right here that just applies to this particular module. Uh, and that's the that's the page builder in in a, in a nutshell, John. All right, so um, that's the page builder. We're going to go through we're going to go through creating a site from scratch. Uh, in, in the next in the next section, but any any questions, just drop them into the chat. And what we'll do is we'll have a Q and A session at the end, and then we are recording this webinar, 
So at the end of the session, we'll, we'll send you an email with a link to this in case you've missed anything. But um, yeah, just want to hear from everybody. What do you think so far? Pop me, a, pop us a message in the chat. Question about stuff. Okay, we can't see that. That was obviously a private one. Do you want to read it out to, to us? Uh, pretty straightforward. Does this include stock images? Okay, yeah. So does it include stock images? So yeah, 100% correct. You can use the layout packs as is, but they are very generic. And with anything you want to be able to... Uh, use your own uh, customizer to your own businesses look and feel or your own sites look and feel all right so if there's no further questions um, the next section that i'm going to jump into is just uh, what else these kind of websites offer you and for that i'm going to jump into the the back end the dashboard as it were all right so after you've created your website and we're going to show you how to do that in a minute um, You'll land on your on the dashboard, the WordPress dashboard, which looks like this, right? And the real power of WordPress, obviously, is that it's it, it's a proper CMS and it allows you to create unlimited pages and posts and and well, all sorts of extra stuff as well. And we'll dive into that in a little bit. But the first thing that I wanted to mention is obviously the plugins, which uh, which come with WordPress, which is where you can really turn on and off functionality. Um, a lot of the functionality that I think people are looking for in a website nowadays. Um, right, so the modern events calendar uh, is, is exactly that. It's an event calendar that allows you to list events. Um, the forum is a user forum that allows people to... Uh, well, we use the forums on our website as well. In fact, if you want uh, support, you'll see on the top right of our website, there's a link to our forum which is the exact same forum as you would get on your website. Um, and this is what it looks like. I'm sure you've seen forums like this. So please, if you need any help at any point, come to our forum and drop a message there. I'll get immediately notified of that. Um, there's something called Image Optimizer, which will compress your images as you upload them into the website, which is good because um, you know space is kind of limited on our packages. Um, Google Analytics allows you to integrate your analytics account into your own website. Uh, MailPoet is a newsletter system which allows you to keep subscribers and, and send newsletters out to them. Ninja Forms allows you to create forms. Rank Math is a powerful SEO tool which will help you to target uh, the kind of search terms you want to target. Uh, web Directory Free is a, is a fantastic uh, web directory and allows you to create, well, I mean, a directory is is obviously listings that are, are um, contact details and, and uh, are mapped and et cetera. Um, and then WooCommerce. WooCommerce is the Mac daddy of, of e-commerce as well in, in, in WordPress. Um, it's an amazing e-commerce tool and works um, incredibly, incredibly well. Um, we also have the pay fast payment gateway for WooCommerce available. So if you want to do online payments, you'd have to sign up with PayFast, um, activate this module, and then obviously put in the, the required settings. So that's how you turn on and off extra functionality in your website that you're going to get with Redshift. It's very, very simple. If, say, for example, I, um, I want to create a directory, I would simply turn and come here to Web Directory Free and click on the Activate button. And after it's activated, you'll see I now have a new um, uh, menu listing on the left here that says directory listings. And obviously, there's now a list of directory listings and create new listing. And that's how WordPress works, obviously, in, in terms of everything. Under posts, you'll see that there's all posts and add new posts. Under pages, there's all pages and add new pages. Um, under directory listings, there's directory listings and create new listings. Everything in WordPress works very similarly. Um, so when you want to add something new, that's how you do it. All right, so the other question obviously would be just in terms of how to uh, customize the rest of your website, right? Because when you get your website, it's gonna have this header at the top, which has got our logo um, and this kind of menu that's going on. Well, in fact, it'll just have a single entry in the menu. This one I've been playing with a bit and I've, I've edited. But it's also got this uh, fake phone number and email 
and obviously the social media accounts are not connected or anything. So let me just quickly show you all of that. That also happens on the back end of your website. It all gets done there. And that all happens through two places. Okay, firstly there's Divi, and under Div Divi is your theme, and under Divi is your theme options. That's where you will set a number of things, most notably your logo. So that's where you would come in here and you would upload a new logo. Uh, image upload, wherever you see that upload button, it'll upload this media library. And you can literally just drag and drop images into here and they will upload. Um, I do recommend turning on our image compressor, image optimizer, before you uh, start just uploading images, especially if you don't know how to compress images before you upload them. Right, and then there's all sorts of things like do you want the fixed navigation bar, yes or no. So what that means is, is whether or not um, the navigation will scroll or, or whether it's fixed with the page. Um, use the Divi gallery, it's great. The, well, I mean there's a whole lot of settings, so I'll let you go through them yourselves. Here's the social media ones. If you'd like to connect to any of them, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, please just paste your profile URL in here, in this um, box over here. If you want to turn any of them off as well, of course, there's a button up top here where you can just simply turn them off if you don't want to show them. And um, there's a couple more default settings. This will be right for most websites, so, but you're welcome to obviously change anything that you want to change here. And if you do change anything, don't forget at the bottom there's always a Save Changes button, and you'll see when it has been saved. So that's the one place that you make changes. The other place that you really make changes is under the Theme Customizer, and that's well, opens up like this, where you can see a preview of what you're actually doing. And obviously, this is where the magic really starts happening. So, right, so. Uh, I'm going to let you go through these settings yourself. Obviously, there's a whole lot of um, information here and, and whatnot. But, for example, the typography, you can come and set a default theme font. Um, and that would then, you know, change it across the whole website. And, um, and body font and et cetera, et cetera. And set the colors without having to code anything. As you can see, it's simply, you know, you select one, or if you go into a color, so it's, a, it's a really simple case of dragging to the color that you want to use as your, as your highlight. And when you're happy with everything, obviously, there's a publish button at the top, which you want to click to make sure that your changes are actually made on your website. All right. And this is also where you're allowed to set, a, where you can create a whole lot of defaults. Um, your header and navigation is all managed over here. So here's the header elements that I was talking about, that fake phone number. If you want to go and change the phone number to your actual phone number, we highly recommend that you do. Um, please come and change it here under header elements. And same with the email. Put your email in here. Um, you can even turn off the social icons if you really don't want them there. If you this is where you can actually turn them off. Um, and uh, this also manages your primary menu bar is, is the one in the white here. The secondary menu bar is the one with the purple background. And again, you can change the background color like quite easily. Just simply, you know, come in here and drag it around. Oh, okay, that's a better color. There we go. And publish that. And and it's that simple to make changes in terms of the look and feel of your website. And there's, um, yeah, the, the fixed navigation is actually when you scroll. So you could have a different background uh, when you actually start scrolling. Um, for example, you might want to actually make your background a, a little bit more translucent when you, when you start to scroll. And so you might do that. And you can see that when it's at the top, it's solid. And as I start scrolling, it gets to a bit of a, a transparency like that. Uh, maybe you love that and you're going to publish that. All right. Um, you can also control all the footer elements. You can set your default buttons layout, your default blog kind of display, sizes of text, colors, etc., etc. You can see mobile styles. This is a really, really useful um, uh, version. 
because you can actually see tablet, what it's going to look like on a tablet, what it's going to look like on a phone, um, and change um, your default settings for all of those. All right. Um, there are some color schemes built in if you want to use those. Uh, menus and widgets and whatnot are better done in the back end of, of WordPress. And obviously, like I said, just don't forget to publish once you've made your changes. And then, and once you publish, obviously, like all of these things are completely instant. So, um, if I go here to visit website, I'll, I'm going to open that in a new tab. You can see here's the page that I've been working on with that menu. And now, as I scroll, you can see it's gone transparent. That was a change that I made just a moment ago. And yeah, there's my there's my fantastic welcome page. All sorted, and uh, um, okay. John just says I must I must show you again how to do that logo because I went through it a bit too fast. That was under the main Divi settings. Um, so if you go to Divi and theme options over here, that will uh, right at the top. You will see where to add in your logo. Um, should I change it quickly, John? Yeah. All right. So I'll show you how to do that. Uh, you can click on the upload button. Um, Going to find a logo to drag in there quickly. Uh, not the same one. Oh, there we go. All right, just going to change it for the a static one, click on upload, there's a save button down the bottom. And as you can see, this logo here is uh, it's an animated GIF at the moment. And uh, when I reload the site, you'll see that it's now swapped into our static JPEG image. Um, and it's that easy to add your logo in. Uh, if you want uh, Obviously, if you want a transparent one, put in a transparent PNG with a transparent background. Um, you can take any kind of uh, image format, uh, GIF, JPEG, PNG, all the, all the basic image formats. Um, that's the other thing. Obviously, the, the website builder has some very, very powerful tools within it. It's got a powerful photo gallery. It's got the ability to display videos. Um, even amongst your posts, when it gets to doing um, posts on the back end of WordPress. So if you're doing posts, which might be your blog posts, um, you actually get the, um, the option to set your post as a video post. It is a type of post. And what that'll do is it'll literally make your whatever video you put into the content. And by video in the content, I mean just paste in your YouTube URL, right, in the content box over here. You just paste in the URL, and, and that's your video. And then if you set this format as video, it'll display your, your video right at the top, like a featured uh, kind of thing. Um, and then whatever text content will go down below that, whatever text content you type in. Um, there's also, just so you know, there's, um, there's a project post type which comes with this theme, which is fantastic for doing portfolio items. Uh, the, dif the difference between the big difference between pages and everything else is obviously pages is for your your more static information. Pages can't be categorized or tagged or anything like that. So pages is for your home, about us, contact us, those kind of things. Whereas your posts uh, would be for your your news, for example, if you're posting uh, blog posts or news or whatever on a regular basis. Uh, projects are great for portfolio, and and then. All the other types of posts that you would get, obviously, are directory listings, um, uh, calendars, calendar events. They're all different types of posts. Um, of course, the forms is a very useful one as well. Forms allows you to build any kind of form that you want. So for example, I have a contact form here, contact me. Um, which is, this is what I'm talking about, name, email, message. If you want to edit any of these things, you know, it's as simple as clicking on it and typing in here, full name, for example. And I go done. 
And then when I click publish, that change is obviously immediate on the website. So I don't have to do anything else. Um, obviously with forms though, you do need to put them on the website somewhere as well. So what that means is on your page, you would have to paste in the short code. And that's, that's what this is, this little thing here next to my form. And every time I create a new form, it'll create a new short code over here. And I just copy and paste this into the text anywhere where I want this on my website and uh, my form will appear. So forms, what are they useful? Other than contact me, you could uh, have a form for people who want to uh, inquire about a particular product, people who want to register for an event, people, etc. So that's where forms are useful. Right, and um, uh, just a, a last couple of things. Obviously, you can add users to your site if people register on your website then um, users it will appear here and you can manage them here. You can add new users as well, so other administrators on your website if other people need to help you out. Um, the settings section, I do, I do think you should uh, come through and go through the settings at least initially when you create your website. You want to come and go through all of these settings. Uh, these are general settings, pretty self-explanatory, but if you get stuck on anything or want further information, you're welcome to get hold of us on our support forums. And of course, we are going to be doing more in-depth training um, on particular aspects of WordPress and, and particularly Red, Redshift WordPress websites. So, you know, specifically like SEO, that in itself is a whole <laughs> two hours of training just by itself. Um, the other important thing that you will see down the bottom is obviously your account page once you once you have signed up and that's where you manage all your all your stuff to do with Redshift and um, your account with us. And um, then John's also saying to me, e-commerce, e-commerce, because e-commerce is huge, right? So yeah, when you turn your website on, when you when you create it, e-commerce is not on by default because yeah, it will. Not everyone wants it. So what you do is you come to plugins and you'll find this plugin called WooCommerce and you simply click on activate. And, and this will then start up a wizard and it works like this. Right, so it's going to run you through a quick wizard that'll uh, ask you a couple of questions about where you are and you simply fill those in, uh, health and beauty, let's just say, product types, are they physical, will you be doing downloads as well, subscriptions, memberships, subscriptions, memberships, comp um, Composite products and bookings are all um, will come at an extra cost. So uh, that's uh, WooCommerce trying to sell their their add-ons. So you can completely ignore that. Physical products and downloads will do for almost everything everything you want to sell, uh, and you can tick both. Um, That and again, they're trying to sell you their themes. Just continue with my active theme. So, uh, plugins that are available is um, obviously a calendar for event listing, forums for if you want to have interaction with people on your website create a knowledge base on anything. Um, image optimizer compresses your images as you upload them. Uh, Google Analytics allows you to track your traffic on your website. Uh, MailPoet is a newsletter system which allows you to keep unlimited lists and I think it's limits, you're limited only to about 2,000 subscribers. So, and, and you can send unlimited newsletters obviously to those people. Um, Ninja Forms is a form builder, as we've seen. Drag and drop, uh, rank math, SEO allows you to target specific SEO terms. Uh, web directory is a um, uh, 
Uh, well, exactly that. It's a directory. Uh, you can create a directory of businesses or contacts or uh, people, whatever your directory might be about. And WooCommerce is, of course, the um, uh, e-commerce um, uh, plugin for WordPress. Right. And um, yeah, John, any other questions from from anyone? Uh, some of the questions that we received from, from you guys is, uh, does it include stock images? The short answer is yes. Uh, it come, the, the images come with the layout packs, but we highly recommend that you use your own content to customize the sites you build to your own look and feel. So content is key. Uh, one of the other questions we had was in terms of SEO, how will we be able to customize meta descriptions or titles? Uh, there is a plugin called Rank Math that we've installed, and you'll be able to make all of those settings uh, in the SEO uh, on, on your on site SEO uh, through that plugin. Well, actually, let me just quickly show you where that is. It's at the bottom of uh, every single sort of post and page that you create. So if I go to add new over here, you'll see that there's a rank math section over here. And as soon as I put in a keyword over here, rank math will start working and tell me how to target that keyword, as it were, what else I can do um, in terms of my content to target that particular key phrase. So that's how it works. Okay. Uh, one of the questions that we got was, would we need to be able to purchase the use of the layout packs? Uh, the answer is no. You can use all the layout packs. They're free to use. And like we mentioned, there's over 1,100 of those. Um, one of the other questions was around URLs. What will my URL look like? Will that include Redshift name in the URL? And then would the Redshift branding appear on a customer's website or my website if we run it under our own business. URLs, the default, the default. Okay, sorry, John, let me answer that one. <laughs> if you don't mind, uh, just mute yourself for a sec. Um, okay, so this is the training website which I created. And as you can see, this is my URL at the top, redshift.site forward slash training. Right, so that is um, uh, the default when you create, and I'm going to show you how to create a website and how that happens when you type that in um, in a moment. But what I would like to show you is another example, one that I did, red shift dot site forward slash dot blog. Right, so. This is one I created, Doug's blog, uh, as a test. But you can see, as I loaded it, the, the URL shop swapped to, well, an old URL that I had to play with. It was lying around. Um, and now the URL has changed. This is what is known as domain mapping. You, you'll see that on most of our packages, we allow you to map a domain to your website. So if you have your own domain, you can do it. And you will be able to purchase custom domains through us as well. So yeah, I hope that answers that question. The second part of the question was, would Redshift branding or advertising be on their websites? The answer is no. You build a website, apart from the URL, if you, if you map a custom URL, nobody will know that it's been built in, Red, in Redshift. They'll see, um, they'll see your site as you've created it, and uh, basically it becomes a standalone WordPress. Uh, website. One of the uh, other I questions. One, one sec, John. There is that uh, little section down at the bottom there that will on Redshift when you first open up, but if you go to Appearance, Customize, and Footer, that. that's where you'll be able to change it for whatever you want. So you can even uh, put in your own tag at the bottom there. So to show you footer, bottom bar. See here, edit footer credits. That's where that link is coming from in the footer. You can come in and edit it, put in whatever you want at the bottom. Uh, so yeah, 
you can completely hide everything to do with Redshift. Okay. Uh, does the logo automatically set to the home page, or would we need that to set that up? The default setting is the logo will appear on all pages. You just have to change the logo out, and um, it uh, it's um, it's there for you to customize. Uh, one of the one of the very good one a very good question is how is Redshift different from Wix and other existing website builder platforms? Well, quite simply, uh, we've turned it on its head in that there's a number of different features. The first is that it's built it's built in WordPress. Uh, over 35 percent of all websites on the internet are are WordPress made, and WordPress gives us uh, limitless options in terms of e-commerce. Uh, the choices that you want to run, you can run forums, you can run directories, you can, you can easily add media. It's, it's very easy to use. What makes it different is that we've made all of the features, all of the premium features available across all packages. So there's nothing stopping you from creating WordPress, uh, an e-commerce store on, on a starter package all the way through to one of the bigger packages. The only thing that limits you is the amount of space and the number of websites that you do use. Obviously, you would upgrade to other packages if you introduce other sites or take up more space. Um, what, we, what we have also done is we've um, all websites that you build come with, a, come with an SSL certificate and anti-spam is installed uh, globally. That was one of the other questions we had. Yeah, John, just on, on that one as well, if you want to map a custom domain, we do insist that you have an SSL for your domain as well. So if you're going to get your own domain, you will have to make sure you get an SSL. If you get a domain through us, it'll come with an SSL. Then um, we're also locally hosted, so the sites are super fast. Uh, if we have any, under, any undersea cable problems, your site will not be affected. That's one of the big benefits in... in uh, in running this is the speed. Uh, we had a question in terms of plugins like WooCommerce, would we need to pay for any pro versions for extra features? WooCommerce is available to all packages. If you want to pay for any pro versions, that's entirely up to you of, of WooCommerce, but we've made the, the basic versions available and there's quite a lot of functionality that you can use with the basic versions. Um, with the URLs, normally we would, be able to register emails on the domain. Is this possible with Redshift? Um, our domains will come with one email address, which we'll set up for you. Um, we're looking at expanding that in the future, but right now only one email address, it, and that's yeah, that's the limitation. And we would have to set that up for you. One of the questions we received was, why have you built this for developers like this? And what is, what is the aim of Redshift for developers? Well, quite simply, we want to be able to create opportunities uh, in our communities. There's a lot of people that are looking to go online, especially now in these difficult times. And um, one of the big obstacles is, you know, skills. And it's quite intimidating. And, and then also the cost to set up a, a website. Now that's why we've gone with the drag and drop builder, uh, and we've gone out with the aim of lowering the barriers to entry. So we want websites to be accessible to anybody. Um, and the idea behind it is if we can empower communities or empower people that are looking for opportunities or around employment or just simply want to enhance their, their skills, let's say you're a graphic designer or you're just simply looking for a side hustle, you can do this, you can, you can turn this into a business. And um, it's really geared at, at creating job opportunities and connecting people that want to go online with those that, that want to take advantage of opportunities. Are there any more questions? Uh, somebody's asked me privately if we can quickly run through the uh, front end builder, the drag and drop that you went through in the beginning. If you can go through that one more time. And uh, in the meantime, if there's any more questions, pop them into the chat and we'll get to them. Right. 
uh, just mute yourself there, John, please. Uh, so back to this page that I was working on, right? So here's my page, not in the builder, just as people would see my website, right? And I want to change this, uh, uh, our products. And um, so if I go to edit page, it's gonna open up the back end editor. If I go to enable visual builder, it's gonna open up what we call the front end editor, which is like this. All right, so now I just need to scroll to that section of the page that I want you to change and find, for example, our products. And, and I can change this into our services, for example. And also what I was saying about design here on the builder is inside all of these modules, other than the content settings, which, uh, which also allow you to link. You can link all of your content, um, buttons, etc. They all have a link uh, option as well. And links are either you could paste in a, a link here or you can use dynamic content, right? So dynamic content means I can go link to, I want a, I want a page link. And so which page do you want to link to? I want to link to my blog page, for example. Um, and that's how easy it is to create a, a link of this entire module, in this case, this whole text module is going to link. Adding a background is really easy. You can add a background color just by choosing a color. You can put in a gradient color. You can add background images, and you can add background videos. You'll find that you can add videos wherever you are. Um, it is obviously best if you can use very small videos. Um, videos tend to be quite large in terms of size, so be careful with those. Um, and then obviously if you use a video, there's all sorts of video settings down below. Or if you use an image, there's, there's image settings down below. You can, you know, parallax settings, etc. Should the image cover or fit or show the actual size. So it allows you a lot of flexibility. And then under design, there's all sorts of um, design options. So for example, um, this heading text that I have here, our services, it's a, it's a heading two. So if I head over to the design and the heading text, option and then I click on H2 I can see the settings that are specific to this one um, this one's been set to 50 pixels and what you'll find also when you roll over is that you, um, you'll see there's a couple of extra options that pop up here uh, for example the, the, if you click on the little mobile icon that'll allow you to set specific settings for tablet and for phone so you can make your um, your uh, text just a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller so that it fits better into the space on the various devices uh, and all of this without knowing really how to code and that's what makes it really really powerful um, if I want to change the color of this maybe I want to make this uh, purple and right and I save that and There I can see what it looks like. Obviously this hasn't saved on the website yet. It hasn't, it hasn't changed on the front of the website. That doesn't happen until I actually click this little blue save button on the bottom right. Someone did ask in one of the previous trainings, how often should you save? And the answer to that is as often as possible. Please just save your work as soon as you've done anything. If you're happy with it, click the save button. It takes a couple of seconds like that. Um, as you see, and, uh, and now it's, the change is made. So now when I exit the Visual Builder and go back to viewing my page, you will see that my change has been made. I'm now going to Purple Owl Services. Right, so I think that uh, kind of covers it. Uh, one, one more request for a demonstration. Uh, George would like to know blocks. So, okay, um, George, sorry, John. A second, I'm just unmuting myself. We have one more question uh, around blogs. Uh, so a user has privately sent me uh, a request. Can you create blogs on this? Absolutely, you can. And then the second part of this question is, if your client wants to write their own blogs on their site, so create their own posts, what permissions would you give them? 
and where would you do this? Right, okay. Hi, George. Thanks for joining us again. Um, all right, so this is a blog page which I created on this website. Let me just jump into the visual builder so you can see how it's actually created. At the top, there's just a, 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 an image and a title, a background image and a bit of text. And then here is my blog module, right? And what the blog module looks like is, is well, this. So what post type should it show? So you, you don't, you're not limited to just posts, right? This blog module will show you any kind of post. Remember, I turned on the directory, so it'll show me directory listings if I want. Projects is my portfolio stuff that I mentioned. Products is obviously, or shop products. So it doesn't, you know, it's any kind of post type, essentially, in WordPress that it'll show you. I can choose how many to show per page, right? Um, and then I can choose categories. So it can be a specific category or, or, or just all categories, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's a bunch of other settings relating to, you know, the posts. Which elements should I show? Should I show a read more button, yes or no? Should I show the author, yes or no? Um, really simple for you to make changes in terms of what you would like to um, put in. Uh, obviously, there's all the design settings, and there's even advanced settings for all of these um, um, for all of, well, everything, every aspect of this module, right? Um, I can even add in like box shadows, um, filters, yeah, animations, all sorts of stuff, right? So once I'm happy with that, obviously I've saved that and, and uh, I've saved this blog page layout, right? And what this will do is it'll pull in my blog posts and blog posts are like this, right? So. I came to posts and add new post, and this is a new post, right? So a post comes down to basically a title, some content, um, and a category. Being posts, you can categorize them and you can tag them, and that allows people to sort them and filter them on the front end, and it allows you to show, like I showed you, specific category. Um, uh, so you can show specific content, like if, if your website is content driven. Um, and as you add new blog posts here, obviously they will populate on this page. Um, this module is, is going to be in a grid setting, so the next one will come up here, actually, where this one is, and this one will move over to the right. Um, and obviously, this is not just that. When you click on the actual blog um, post, it opens up the individual. Uh, I'm still in the editor. Yeah. So. When you click on the actual blog post, it opens up the individual blog page, which in this case looks like this. There's not much content on this, it's just the featured image and the title. And But the other aspect of um, Divi, and we're going to cover this in, in more advanced training as well, is that there is um, a very, 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 very powerful theme builder, which allows you to build custom themes, uh, custom kind of layouts. So if you wanted to do a custom blog layout, you could come here and choose to do a template. And the first thing it's going to ask you is like, what, uh, what, what should it apply to? So should it apply to your pages or your posts or posts in a specific category or, you know, even specific posts only? Um, you can do different. Uh, you can do event layouts. You can do product layouts. You can do project layouts. So, again, multifaceted. Uh, Divi allows you to edit all sorts of stuff. But if I wanted to just do it, for example, for my posts, um, what it allows me to do here is to create a custom body uh, that'll keep my normal, my default header and footer, but I can build a custom body, and again, it's going to open up the builder, and this will allow me to create you know, a more uh, complex kind of um, post layout, uh, but just using the default kind of post fields. and. Uh, yeah, like I said, we, we, we'll cover this in, um, again, there's a whole lot of options, choose layouts, build from scratch, etc. But we're going to cover this uh, in more advanced training, so I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm just going to get out of that right now. Um, yeah, that, like I said, that's a, that's a really advanced, that in itself is a whole two-hour lesson as well. Does, if there are any more questions, just pop them into the chat. I just want to quickly talk uh, packages, Doug, if you can 
if you can quickly just go and have a look at our packages. I uh, got a question from Aisha. When would we be able to start using Redshift? We could start using now. We've had, um, we've had already uh, a couple of people build a few sites. Um, so nothing stopping you from, from doing it today. And the good, the good news is we have, um, we've opened up to a 21 day free period. So we're giving you 21 days to use the product for free, no obligation. Um, and this is in line with the fact that we recognize that everybody is in lockdown. They have the time available and people are looking to up their skills right now and, and also to stay out of trouble and, and, and do something that's stimulating. It's also a great opportunity to reach out to those that you know who would like to take their business online and don't know how. Perhaps you could, uh, perhaps you could, perhaps you could help them out. Uh, and then, and then, just quickly, packages. Uh, our packages start from seventy-five rand a month. That includes the hosting. Uh, no setup. We don't charge a setup cost, uh, and that's really up to you. If you want to charge your client, or, or if you if you have somebody in mind and you want to build for them, that's up to you. You can charge them. We don't we don't make money there. Uh, we we charge for the hosting. And we give you all access to all features and plugins, with the exception of custom domains on the starter pack. Uh, the the next package up, which is, um, don't just scroll for us, business light, uh, includes the uh, custom domain, which you would then have to purchase. But essentially, what what you could do with a business light package is you could build up to two sites. Your space is then uh, a different. Uh, different um, the differentiator across the, the platforms these sites are typically small so a typical uh, build uh, you know you're looking at around 20 30 megs if you pull in a custom pack and then obviously your 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 media is going to determine your images your videos your content is going to determine how much space you use but like like Doug mentioned we've included a uh, an optimizer tool which which crunches all of that without taking away resolution uh, and then obviously there's um, there's a business unlimited package which uh, allows you to build up to four sites and then Vumile asked if we could build more than that you really aren't limited to the amount of sites you can build I will show them that the packages when I do the registration that's fine we're gonna we're gonna add those to the the, the website uh, for, for developers and agencies, because we realize that there are people that want to do mul multiple sites. Okay, well, John, why don't I show people the registration process, how to create their sites quickly? Right, so, okay, so last thing I want to do is just show you quickly how to sign up. There's uh, numerous Let's Build links all over our website. If you click any one of those, it's going to take you through to our sign up page yeah you will see some of the bigger packages as well um, for for people who are planning to do this as a business um, right up to an unlimited sites package um, so yeah eventually it just becomes about space um, so I'm just gonna for the sake of argument select this plan and the first thing it's going to ask me is for my site title so I could type uh, um, Sam services and my URL this is where the forward slash part comes in remember we asked about someone asked about URL which your URL by default will be redshift.site forward slash and whatever you type in here at this point so I'm going to type in here and watch it'll populate down the bottom where it says your site I'm going to type in Sam's services and you can see that it has populated it down the bottom here and this will then become the URL that I would share with people to get them to visit my website. Please note that when you do finish the registration process, we will send you an email um, that will have the URL of your website. It will also have the URL of your admin area where you log into to your dashboard where you make all the changes to your website. Um, and yeah. That's so uh, all you would need to do to finish this process is obviously put in a username and email uh, and your password and create account. Uh, on the very next page, it's going to ask you just to log in, log in straight away with the username and, and password that you've chosen, and you can start building your, 
your site is immediate. We don't ask you for any payment details in this process. Um, you will immediately get into a 21-day trial period, and at the end of that period, you will you will be given a notification to to um, take a subscription with us. Uh, should you wish to continue um, having your website on Redshift, and uh, yeah, that's it in a nutshell, John. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's been a good session. Uh, can we just get a couple of reactions? There's a poll that's gone out. Uh, we will be circulating a, a survey as well, and we'll make the recording available to you. Um, but yeah, just quickly thoughts. Could we? Could you just pop your thoughts into the chat box so we can quickly see? Um, it's it's been a pleasure hosting this, and we're really exciting about uh, really excited to to go live with the product, uh, especially given where we are right now in our economic climate and where we sit. Uh, we think it's we think it's a good uh, something that could really help benefit people. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your feedback. Let's give it a few minutes. Give it a few seconds. Okay, Vums, thanks. Great platform. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, Vums. Hello, John, I'm just going to jump in here and, and that why WordPress part. Well, WordPress is by far the best platform I know. I've developed websites for years, and I know that this is the best platform. Uh, Google loves it. Google really, really, really loves WordPress if you use it properly. And, um, and obviously, the why Redshift is because I look after WordPress in this case. Anyone who's built a WordPress website will tell you that there is a certain amount of maintenance involved. And what Redshift does is mean you get means you get all the power of WordPress without any of the hassle of the maintenance because we take care of all of that side of it. So yeah, that's the real benefit. Yeah, John just said to also remind everyone that we do have a forum on our website. Um, if you come to our, to Redshift.site and look on the top right, there's a link to the forum. That's where you can come and you can post uh, even feature requests. We'd like to hear back from you what you would like to see. We're open to all ideas, so, so bring on your ideas. And, and obviously, I'm the one behind this forum. I have uh, more than 15 years of experience building websites. Uh, the last 10 of it has been WordPress specifically. And um, yeah, like I said, I, I mean, I know, I know WordPress, and it's it really is an incredibly powerful tool. It can do really anything. Um, you, you know, John keeps asking me, "Can you do this?" And I'm like, "No, John, that's the wrong question. The question is, how long will it take?" <laughs> the question is not, "Can it be done?" It's, "How long will it take?" And that's really what it does come down to. Uh, WordPress is super flexible, um, and that's why we've we've gone with it. All right, uh, two, two more questions. We got you. Thank you for your feedback. The feedback's coming through. It's wonderful. Uh, one question that Aisha sent, Aisha sent us is, can subscriptions easily be upgraded? Yes. If you go into your dashboard, uh, uh, Doug, just share your screen. Just go to the dashboard. Uh, subscriptions can be easily changed um, on the fly. And then the second question we've received is, is there support once you've subscribed as a customer? Absolutely, there is support. Um, we've got the forum. So the forum is designed to start uh, collecting uh, frequently asked questions, and it will build a data bank of questions up, uh, frequently asked questions, and it will then answer that. And we are easily reachable. What, what we are going to be adding is a number of videos to the site as well, so look out for those couple of how-tos and we're going to be holding some more advanced uh, training sessions as well. So look out for that detail. Some matters will hit you uh, once. Um, but again, a, a survey is going to go out, type in what, give us your feedback, let us know what you'd like to see and, uh, and we will include that for you. Okay, the other thing I just wanted to add, John, in terms of support is obviously we've, we've chosen to be straightforward and honest about everything that this is WordPress and, and the shop is WooCommerce. So if you just Google these things, you'll find that there's also like reams of, of help documentation on, on how WordPress works, how WooCommerce works, et cetera, et cetera. 
There's loads of documentation. There's loads of YouTube movies on how to do it. So that's why we've, we've decided to be like straightforward about the technology that we're using um, to allow you to, to just Google your answers as well. And like I say, you'll find that there is a plethora of information uh, available, free information um, on how to do certain things. There's even loads of information about Divi. So again, we could have hidden the name of the theme. We could have called it something else. We've elected to be honest about everything and show you everything so that you can actually go out and find this documentation as well. All right, guys, it seems like the questions are, are dried up. Um, if you do have more questions, again, our forum has uh, a section for pre-sale questions. So if you've got any more questions before you like, even want to sign up, you're more than welcome to come pop them there. And, and then obviously once you have signed up, if you hit any uh, roadblocks or any issues, then, then please uh, give us a shout. Um, just know that I'll fix that WooCommerce thing as quick as possible. That was a, you know, get rid of that old one, that new one. But yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for your time. Thanks for joining us and uh, stay healthy. Thanks, guys. Uh, we'll chat soon and look out for those ma mails. And yeah, we'd appreciate if you could give us the feedback by the survey because that. That helps us improve the product even further. And um, looking forward to working with you. Take care.